wandering around this city that's not New York. It's a city I invented. I wanted to be a tourist in this city. And I wanted the excitement of discovering a city as big as New York, maybe of the same age as New York. That's how he comes upon all of these adventures. You know, I don't know how many there are. I grew up just, you know, after underground comics, Robert Crumb, Bill Griffith, you know, and some of those concentrated on sex and, you know, drug taking. So that was done already. I didn't, I felt that was not something I wanted to make comics about. I would make comics about these forgotten aspects of urban life. Yeah, I wanted to talk about small business, the impulses behind small business people. It's because it hadn't been done. I mean, I thought it was an ignored area to write about. I came across this idea that there was such a field as real estate photography. It was in a listing in the uh, Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature. You know, there's a fortune to be made in real estate photography, and I'd never heard of this field, but people went around for real estate agents taking pictures of buildings. That's what it was, a very utilitarian kind of work. The weekly strip is very short. They're almost like a haiku. They're like 10 lines. I would say there's a real condensed feeling to them, like a short pop song or a short poem. This strip is based on lots of things I saw or imagined or dreamt about, but Knippel is not aware of the narration. The narration is always in another voice, the voice of the author. He's not me, I'm the narrator. He's just the man who brings us around the city and you see him suffering and going through all the anguish of a small business person. It was the year 2000. You know, I was making a decent living from comics. And so this was just this, I don't know, a kind of um, recognition or I don't know that it affirmed anything to me, but maybe to other people. If you make a lot of work, you're going to raise the possibility of doing, you know, inspired work. And if that is raised to happen often enough, somebody says, wow, almost every strip this person does is pretty good. I don't know that, that the word genius is the answer. It's more like you're in this place where you can do a lot of inspired work. The actual wording of the, the fellowship is for your promise, for your work that you will do. Not necessarily for what you've done. Brooklyn College was sort of the neighborhood college where I grew up in the Kensington section of Brooklyn. I majored in studio art. You know, at that time, there was the English department and the art department. But in the antique forms of drawing and writing, they never came together. Whenever I talked about stories with my our teachers, they said, well, if you have to make up a story, you know, do it, but it doesn't, and I have nothing to say about story. I was able to do figure drawing, which came in handy for making comics. A lot of people outgrow the comics they grew up with, which whether they were superheroes or, you know, adventure comics, I sort of outgrew them from a literary point of view. And I started reading at Brooklyn College, and I took a lot of literature courses. A lot, it seems like a lot. I read a lot, you know, a novel a night. My interest in storytelling moved outside of those genres. So I knew I had to make comics 
that dealt with all sorts of aspects of the world. Over the years, I was always attracted to dairy restaurants. There were quite a few of them in New York, and I went to them since my childhood and as a young adult. And I would say in the 70s and 80s, they were all closing as I went to them. The ones I knew in New York were all run by Eastern European Jews. They were below the notice of restaurant historians, and they were not like touristic places that would even have postcards. A lot of them I drew from memory because I didn't take pictures of them. I talk about this thing that I call the Milich Dicker personality, the dairy personality. The atmosphere in these places was a very low key, ruminative more than appetitive. People sat and thought about things, hatched schemes. They didn't do anything. They just, a lot of thinking and sitting around and uh, over a cup of coffee and a noodle kugel. Everything, you know, you see around us, like the shapes of these very standard, the salt shakers, these uh, napkin holders are just imbued with a lot of significance just because they follow you through life. They're the background material to everyone's life. And you don't think about them, but they're there. Just like dairy restaurants. You know, I went to these places and I just took them for granted. I said, these are here. They were here before I was born and they'll probably be here forever. But it, was, it wasn't the case. The pedagogical point of the strip is to make people aware of a certain kind of urban life that's somewhat endangered in certain cities by, you know, globalization, chain stores, gentrification, all these things that make it really hard for a small business like the one we're in right now to exist. I think if you read these strips, you'll realize what the value of that kind of, the invention of small business. Small business people have to be inventive. They don't have a lot of money to pay a designer to do their signage. So there's that kind of invention going on. And I think that's what I like people to uh, come away with. <laughs>